These painters are trying to do a job. Four of them take 12 days, almost two weeks to do it. So what we're asking now is, how many days would it take if I increase the number of painters, if I had six painters instead of four, okay? Can I turn this off now? Because I'm gonna need the rest of the board, yeah? Okay. Now, this is actually really important. What I'm gonna ask you to do is rule off where you've done the rest of the quick questions. Wake up, there we go. Rule off where you've done that. And we're gonna think about this question for together, right? So we said four painters gave you 12 days. And now the question is, how long for six painters, okay? Now, a few of you put your hands up and you said you had an answer. Anyone want to volunteer your answer? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, like eight days for six painters. Eight days. Eight days, question mark. Now, I saw a few of you gave, I saw a few of you had that number on your page and I asked several of you the same question, which was, how confident are you that that answer is right? And some of you kind of like, Eh, I'm kind of confident. And others of you are like, I, I, just, I just guessed. It seemed like it was in the rough ballpark, okay? Now what we're going to be covering today, the idea we're covering today and the graphs we're gonna be looking at are exactly about these problems. So I was trying to be a little bit sneaky and introduce you to this topic before I introduced it to you. Here's the idea, right? Let's just imagine that, you know, you're one of the four painters and your three friends, sorry guys, they just ditched you, okay? So now there's just one painter on the job. So let's just assume you all work at the same pace. If there's four times fewer painters, then how much longer is the whole task going to take? Four times fewer, less people doing the work. Sophia, what do you think you? Um, I got 48 days. Okay, 48 days. Yes, yeah, Sophie, is that what you said? Now this makes sense to me, right? Because it's like, oh, you're gonna work four times slower aren't you, right? Four times slower, because there's only one of you. So therefore, it would take four times longer. You following with me? So four times slower, four times longer. Now this idea here, we actually call these um, work days, right? So there are gonna be 48 work days. And the more workers you throw at it, the faster it will get, make sense? So for example, let's just do a simple one. If I had two painters, only half the group left, okay? How fast or how long is it going to take, yeah? 24 days, and you can see this from two different angles. Number one, if you go from just you, you double the number of workers, you'll work twice as fast, won't you? So that's why it takes half the time, yeah? Or if you go back to the original situation, it's like half of us left. So it's gonna take us twice as long, 12 days, okay? Now you can probably see there's a relationship between all of these numbers, right? 148, 224, four lots of 12. Can you see what's the connection that brings us to six and eight? What's the thing that combines them? Yeah. It halves. Say that again. It halves. It halves. What halves exactly? Ah, 48 to 24 to 12. Though, 12 doesn't halve to 8, does it? Let me maybe ask one more. What if you had three painters? Hmm, three painters. How could we work this out? Have a think. I think your brain's getting there, but I want us all to get there, right? Can we go back to the original situation of everyone's left you? You're there working by yourself. So unfortunately it's gonna take you, that, that's a really long time, that's really sad for painting a house. Okay, 48 days. But now you can work three times faster as a group. Three times faster than that. So what would three times faster than 48 days be? What's a third of 48? It's 16, right. Okay, now, in order to sense the pattern here, right, hopefully you can see that there's division happening and multiplication. You know, I said to you, oh, what's 48 divided by three? That's how you gave me the answer, right? So what's really going on, the pattern between all of these, and it also matches the answer that we've got, is that one times 48 is 48. Two times 24 is also 48. Three times 16. In the original question, the four times 12. And this is why we can know, not just say, I think I'm on the right ball, Ball try, right? I can know that six times eight actually does match my pattern. Does this make sense? So we can actually formulate this in a rule and I'd love you to make like a little subheading for me. We call this idea, here's the heading for you, indirect variation, indirect variation. Hopefully this is ringing a little bit of a bell. The idea here, right? This example was painters, the number of painters times 
the amount of time that you spent. In our example, it always equal to what happened when I multiplied through? You always got the same number, which was? 48. Okay, like so. So mathematicians, famously lazy. We don't want to write painters and time every single time. So I'm just going to write P and T equals 48. Okay? Now, this here is an indirect variation relationship. When you've got two things, they're connected together. They always multiply to give the same thing. Right? Now, the important thing here is, did you notice, as the number of painters increases, as the number of painters increases, what happens to the time it takes? It goes down, it decreases, right? Now, do you, do you, remember, do you remember the phrase direct variation? Direct variation. So this is simpler, right? In direct variation, the more you have of one thing, the more you have of the other, right? Does this make sense? So for example, sorry, this is really cheesy, but I'm doing it just so that you have a thing in front of you to remember, right? If you had $30 and you went out to Dimmicks, you could buy exactly one book. There you go. If you had more money, if you had $60, you can buy, surprise, surprise, two books. You can see I'm not very delicate with these. That's what happens when you're an author, okay? You don't care about your books. $90, three books, okay? You're getting, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I do have one more, here we go. Catch real, one, two, three, four, $120. How many books? Okay, more money, more money, more books. Does this make sense? That's direct variation. But indirect variation, this is why it has its own name, right? It has this kind of reverse relationship. You increase one thing, you decrease the other, okay? That's the key thing about it. In fact, I'd love you to maybe write that with me. And maybe if you've got some colors there to indicate this. So I like to put one arrow up and one arrow down, okay? As one quantity increases, what happens to the other one again? The other quantity? Decreases, right? So this is sort of opposite thing happening, right? I'm going to really highlight it with color. So I'm putting my increase in red and my decrease in blue. Okay, now, what does this actually look like? Well, see this guy here, P. T equals 48. We can actually draw and show this relationship visually. So underneath what you've got here, if you've got a ruler, who's got a ruler there? If you have a ruler, it'd be really handy. I'm sorry I'd lend you one, but the only one I have is this comically large one, which you probably don't want to use on your book. So maybe borrow a ruler from a friend. And underneath this, we're going to draw a set of axes together. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Jama. This set of axes we're going to draw, we don't need to have the whole Cartesian plane. We're just going to do a quarter of it, actually. And um, we normally label the Cartesian plane, what do we normally label the horizontal axis? We normally call it X, and we normally call the other one Y, right? But this time, I'm not actually interested in X and Y. I'm interested, for this particular case, in painters and time. Painters and time. So I'm going to make this horizontal axis the painter axis, and or painters, rather. And the vertical one, I'm going to call out time. Okay, now just look up for a minute, and um, it's okay if you're still drawing, but I just want you to see me do this part, okay? I'm not going to worry about us being too visually accurate here. I just want to get the overall sense. As you can see, I increase the number of painters, right? The amount of time that it takes reduces, right? So I'm going to get a shape, and this is the one I'd love you to draw, right? I'm going to get a shape that looks roughly like this. Okay, so you can go ahead, you can go draw that sort of, it's like an arc of a circle, sort of. Now, you could pick points on there. You could say, ooh, this point here might be like having a single painter, like all our friends did just so. That's why the time is so high, right? One painter, 48 days. And then as it sort of curves down, the more painters you add, the lower the time goes, okay? But importantly, let's think about this. Suppose we all started painting. We got everyone in Cherrybrook Technology High School to start painting. We got 2,000 painters, okay? What might the time be? I think we'd all agree it'd be much shorter, be very, very small. Would the time be zero? No, it wouldn't. It'd still take us like, you know, a second to do like a little dab of paint and the person next to us. It'd still take us some time, right? What if we had like everyone in Sydney? That's like four and a half million people. Would the time ever get to zero? No, it would, might, might be really short, but it never quite See the time axis, right? It never quite gets 
to zero. Now we can draw this visually. There's a dotted line we're going to put on and it has a name. Does anyone remember what we call it? You got that kind of shape down here like that? It starts with an A. Met this word before? Yeah. It's an asymptote. Very good. So I'd love you to label with this with me. It's a weird word, hard to spell. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. So there's an asymptote there, right? No matter how many painters you throw at this, right? P can, painters can go to like millions and millions and millions, but you'll never get to time equals zero, okay? Because um, they're still going to take a second or two or something like that, okay? Now that approaching, right, we call that an asymptote, but this overall shape, this arc that we've drawn, it also has a name. It starts with an H. Has anyone heard this name before? We call this guy a hyperbola, right? Same kind of um, part in the word as um, parabola. In Latin, bola just means thrown, like it's the arc that something makes when you throw it, okay? But it does look different to a parabola. However, it's got that same curvature. It's not a straight line, which is very important. Direct variation, straight line. Indirect variation, you've got this thing happening, okay?